uh, we aren't even done yet. So, when did that flip uh, switch in your minds where to go from you're here to get in Connor's face to I have a group of young kids that I have to get to their, to to get them to fulfill their dreams? Honestly, the the crazy thing was, you know, we we got here, did some. I mean, I was here for like two days and did some photo shoots and did some some little you know hoopla show opening stuff, and then all of a sudden. These, this group of, of people were in front of me and Dana and Connor, and, and then all of a sudden I had my team, and I had a team with my name on the back of the jersey. And what, what it meant to me to have my name on the back of all those athletes' jerseys and, my, and their future in my hands, uh, I mean, as soon as I met them. And then we went through our first workout and then – started hearing all their stories, their backgrounds, you know, where, where they have been, their ups, their downs, their wins, their losses, their families. They're just like me, you know? All the, there's not a lot of difference between all of us fighters. And uh, I didn't come here to be this dictator. I didn't come here to be this big-time coach. I came here to be their, their friend, their mentor, their big brother, their shoulder to cry on, and the guy who's going to make them believe in themselves. So it was, it was from the very beginning, and... Uh, Team Chandler's performances have showed it thus far. Well, without getting too specific, because I know you can't give away spoilers, how has it been being around Conor McGregor these past few weeks? It's always fun and cordial until it isn't. It's always, it's always copacetic until we hit the boiling point. Um, you know, Conor and I are natural-born competitors. Um, I, as I said, I came here to, to prove that I'm better, better than him in every sense of the word, in every single aspect of competition, not just us fighting later this year, but in this competition of the Ultimate Fighter, um, Connor and I have a lot of mutual respect. We, not a lot of mutual respect for each other. He, you know, even in his awesome brash trash talk, um, behind all of that stuff, he's got a lot of respect for the sport, for the purity of mixed martial arts, the purity of martial arts, and and all of its competitors. Connor and I have a lot of mutual respect for one another. Um, Ultim but ultimately, I don't know if we like each other as much as we thought we were going to. And uh, the good thing is we get to settle it with four-ounce gloves under a certain rule set in a contest later on this year, and I can't wait to do it. To go off of that, when they announced this fight, there was no date. There wasn't a weight cl class announced. So, like, what's, do you have any info you can give us in terms of all that? No info yet. I'm looking for info. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't, I, at this point, I don't think it's going to be at 155. Connor's Express is going to be at 170. Um, I would love it at 170. I'll fight him at 185. I'll fight him at whatever weight class we want to fight. I, don't, I could care less. Um, I just want to fight the man. Um, it would make a lot of sense um, from, you know, the airing of the show ending in August for us to fight sometime in September, October, sometime this fall. I haven't heard an actual date, um, but I'm planning to be ready by August, September, October, whenever. The final one for me, Connor said that obviously he thinks he'll slice through you, I think was his exact phrasing. You told Oscar for the Mac Life. So uh, what's your prediction of how this fight eventually plays out? No, it's great. We, we, that's exactly who we want. The biggest combat sports star and icon that we have ever seen, thinking he, he's going to come back and slice through somebody. That's exactly what we want. That gains intrigue. It, it builds the momentum. It builds, it builds the mystique of, of who he is and us putting butts in seats. That's exactly what we want. I can tell you this, it's definitely not going to happen. I can tell you this, um, I see it going a, lot, a, a much different way. I think I've seen enough of Connor over the last couple weeks to, to know that I am going to not just slice through him but bludgeon him with both of these hands and do whatever, do whatever I want, both standing or on the ground, and finish him by the second round. That's my Mystic Mike prediction, and I stand behind it. Mike, uh, you said you came here to get in Connor's face, and you put a picture up on your Instagram the other day of the two of you seemingly in each other's faces. Has there been a few tense moments? There has been, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's always fun, too. I mean, you got to remember, too, aside from, you know, what we're going to see on ESPN later this summer, we show up to uh, a production crew. We show up to... Um, itineraries. We show up to, hey, you're doing this, you're picking teams, you're doing all this kind of stuff. Connor's getting his footing, I'm getting my footing. We're not really that worried about each other. We're, we're here to do our job and, and figure out how we're going to coach these guys. Mutual respect. Hey, I'm not worried about you. I'm going to try to figure this out. I'm going to pour into my guys. He's pouring in, into his guys. Then all of a sudden we get our footing under us and realize, okay, now it's time to go after that guy, the guy that I can't wait to beat up later this year, the guy that I can't wait to compete against, the guy that I can't wait to go out there and prove myself against. And uh, I think, 
yes, what has happened thus far has been, uh, has been a lot of fun, and I can't wait for you all to see it later on this, this, this year on ESPN. Um, my guys winning and losing fights, his guys winning and losing fights, us being emotionally invested in the wins and losses of our fighters, uh, ultimately spilling over into our own emotional turmoil, for better or worse, and enjoying the process. So it's been a lot of fun, yes, a lot of tension. A lot was made of like, oh, are you going to get the nice Connor? Or are you going to get the nasty Connor? From your perspective, which Connor have you received? Connor, I think I made my prediction correctly when I see a guy in Connor who is so good at looking at the Venn diagram of good guy, bad guy, and, and guy in between who, who, who doesn't quite know when he's going to be crazy mean crazy witty crazy nice crazy respective or respectful only crazy respectful just to set you up to lower your guard just so he can spit you with some venom the next day connor on monday is different than connor on tuesday who's different different than connor on wednesday and i freaking love it i absolutely love it i came in with with my arms open my hands open saying i have no idea what to expect here um i'm just trying to be authentically myself and uh let the chips fall where they may because you never know you never quite know what's going to happen and also with me and my team and his team you can't make a plan because you because your plans are going to get spoiled on this show because there's all all kinds of crazy stuff getting pulled out of the hat at all all different times but connor's been uh both sides of the coin to say the least hey michael back here uh, Michael, I'm just wondering, I'm assuming you've been out there in the arena. Is it a little awkward to watch Conor McGregor's whole movie play out? And do you plan to watch Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal? Um, I actually haven't been out there yet. Um, I was actually going to go meet those guys because I know they're going to film this scene again. I actually did a, I flew down to the Dominican Republic and did a scene with Jake um, two weeks before the last fight as well. So I'm friends with him and and uh, one of the stunt coordinators, Steve Brown, who I actually wrestled at the same time with in, in college. He wrestled at Central Michigan. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the remake of Roadhouse, Roadhouse is one of the awesome uh, kind of movies here in the United States. Huge cult following. Jake Gyllenhaal, you know, admittedly is one of my favorite actors of all time, even before I got to meet him and realized that the man that Jake Gyllenhaal is aside from being an A-list celebrity, is actually really cool and really normal. Um, so, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see Connor um, on the silver screen, on the bright lights of Hollywood. You know, the, that's what I said, too, before this fight got announced. It's bad enough we had to, to uh, compete with the Bentleys and Bugattis and Lamborghini yachts, and we had, now we have to compete with the bright lights of Hollywood when he was filming Roadhouse. But he came back. He agreed to the ultimate fighter. He has agreed to fight me. He and I are... Uh, building something beautiful here, and I can't wait to go out there and, and give you guys uh, an awesome show. Now, we are in Las Vegas. Um, I want to put some money down. How much should I bet that Kill Cliff will actually stay the name of your team and gym? <laughs> I don't know. At this point, we're just known as the big gym in South Florida. Uh, that big gym. Um, you know, I, I have no idea, aside, you know, with the business dealings behind the scenes. I know the group of men that I train with, the group of coaches and training partners, plus the facility that we have in South Florida, Deerfield Beach, Florida, is uh, second to none. Generaled by Henry Hooft, um, what he has built there. My manager as well, Dave Martin, has, uh, we've built something absolutely awesome. And, and our, our wins speak for themselves. So um, I will continue to represent them. But as of right now, we're pretty much known as uh, that big gym in South Florida. Mike, over here. Um, yep. So at the top of your division, obviously, we have Islam Mahashev. I know that's a fight down the line. You know, you're probably eyeing. Just how do you look at that fight stylistically? Because I think with your style, with your, you know, striking and your wrestling, it's very interesting. Don't you do it, man. This is what always happens. You guys ask me to talk about Islam, and then all of a sudden the headline is, oh, Chandler thinks he can beat Islam when I'm no, over no, here. We, I, I know. Future. I, I know, future. I know. But this is what always happens. No, I mean, I have a ton of respect for Islam. Um, as I, I have said in, in previous interviews, Islam running through Charles um, and then beating Volkanovski, I picked Volkanovski to win. I did. Um, once again, I have been proven wrong. Once again, my foot is in my mouth. Um, so I just, 
I think Islam is blossoming into at the right time the champion that he is and 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 will be and and who we thought he could be. We weren't quite sure. I think we put the cart before the horse when it came to Islam Mahachev. I stand behind that. But now at this point, at this juncture, I think he has proven himself to be the to be the guy. Um, ultimately, I think all of us think we can beat anybody on any given night. I think you put me in a in a octagon anywhere around the world against Islam. I think my, my chances are pretty darn good. But um, ultimately, he's proven himself thus far. He's our champion for a reason. I'm going to go out there, smash Connor, get my hand raised, and then uh, maybe fight him later on. Should he be at number one on the pound-for-pound pound list? Because obviously Volkanovski was in that spot. I, I, don't, th I don't know about that. You know, I, I, don't think, I don't think you beat a guy, a weight class below you, and then go above him. I mean, a win is a win, unless it's a different weight class, you know, ultimately. You know, so... Volkanovski, in my mind, the guy who has cleared out his division only to go up a weight class to take a chance to possibly capture the double champ status, shouldn't lose his number one pound for pound spot by losing to a guy who's, you know, 10, 10 15 pounds heavier than him. This last one for me, uh, speaking of weight classes, has it been confirmed that you and Connor are going to fight at lightweight or welterweight? And, and what's a possible date for that fight, too? What, what are you kind of hearing? Can you give us some insight? He's talking about 185. We'll see. You know, I, he, was, he was talking about 185, and I called his bluff. I think he, I think he doesn't think I'm as heavy and as, as dense as I, as I actually am. I'm sitting here at 191 pounds. Um, so I'll fight a 185. I'll fight a 170. If Dana steps in, and I've heard him talk about 155, if Dana steps in and gets his way, possibly it's 155. I could care less. I am a, a guy who showed up in the UFC in September of 2020 with my work boots on, and I've said yes to every single opportunity. I've said yes at every single step of the way. They want to do it at 170. I think that's a nice little sweet spot. Um, and as I've said, too, this show ends in August, so it would make a lot of sense for us to fight in September. I hope it's a September, and I think we... I think, it's, I think this fight is too big to do T-Mobile Arena. I think we sell out Allegiant Stadium or Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Mike, uh, one more quick one. Um, Eddie Alvarez gave an interview this week, and he said he tried to make that trilogy fight three times, and it's not on him, and he says it's just you don't want to fight him. So can you clarify what, what Eddie means by that? Yeah, no, I, uh, I will be candid and say yes. There was a moment where my con Bellator contract was going to end. Tito Ortiz was fighting Chuck Liddell or something under Oscar De La Hoya's something or something. I don't even know if that fight ever happened. There was a moment there where we talked about, hey, we can go ahead and take matters into our own hand. I can bounce out. You can bounce out. Let's fight each other, do a trilogy. That was the only time that there was any kind of uh, contract talks happening. Obviously, as Faye would have it, I re-signed with Bellator, fight out, fought out my contract, and now everything has worked out perfectly. So sometimes, you know, these fighters want to take their, their – it was just a conversation. It wasn't my idea. You can try to act like you're the master of your own destiny – but it's only going to be to your own detriment in a lot of ways. But good thing for, for Eddie, I don't I want to see him fight bare knuckle. My wife and I were talking about that. We've, we've watched a couple bare knuckles. We kind of enjoy it, honestly. Uh, but I don't want to see Eddie Alvarez getting punched bare, bare knuckle. Um, but I don't think that trilogy will ever happen. My fault, his fault, don't matter. We'll see. Iron Mike. Iron Mike. Yes. As of right now, Conor McGregor's still not in the USADA pool. You want to fight in September or October, but how long are you willing to wait? Yeah, no, that's, that's a good question because I actually just, uh, I just asked my management today to, uh, to, to start putting pressure and figure out. Right now we're at March 3rd, 3rd or 4th. Um, if we want to fight in September, he's got to hop in the pool. Um, that's just the simple fact of the matter. So, you know, we will, we will see. Um, I could care less, man. I... I don't care what he weighs, what he's doing, how long he's in the USADA pool. It does not matter to me. It's another man with two arms and two legs, and I've been doing this for over a decade. So uh, I'm excited to go out there and compete against him. But, yeah, ultimately, rules is rules, and uh, we got to figure out how to get around the red tape and, and get him in the pool and get him tested and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see. Michael? Yes. Um, Bo Nickel makes his... A debut in about an hour and as a credentialed uh college wrestler yourself man i just wanted your thoughts on bo nickel and how far he can go in this sport yeah i'll give you two thoughts i think bo nickel i think bo nickel has an exponential uh opportunity and exponential growth and exponential potential in this sport i think bo can do awesome awesome things i think bo will do awesome things i think bo has the people behind him the people around him he knows how to train um he's got the talent 
And uh, obviously, at this point, he hasn't been very shy on the microphone. Now, that would be the second thing I would say. I, I think it's a little bit unbecoming to come into the UFC off the Contender Series and start talking about Hamzat Shumayev and fighting John Jones or whoever he's freaking fighting. You know, at some point, you got to just play the game as well. You got to grow, but grow at the right rate. Um, people see what Connor did getting on the microphone. People see what these other people have done. Uh, I think Bo's getting a little bit, you know, a little bit too talky for for uh, the the average fans liking. If it were me and I were his manager, I'd say, hey, let's keep our nose to the grindstone. Let's knock them knock them down when they when they put them in front of us. Let's talk about realistic matchups, but don't talk about Hamzat Shemaev, your your first fight in the UFC, basically. Are you excited? Are you excited? To but I do see love I do love his willingness to say those things because it gets us all talking. Here I am at a press conference talking about him, right? So it's, it's a good thing. But, but ultimately, to the average fan, they're like, wait a second, dude. We don't even know who you are yet. Who you, why are you talking about Hamza, you know? Are you excited just to see the comeback of American wrestling with, with all you know, the, the Dagestan wrestling has, has taken over, but now American wrestling is coming back? Absolutely, man. Good old-fashioned passion in American wrestling. Man, I wouldn't be sitting up here today talking to you all if, if – if I wasn't a wrestler here in the United States, the greatest country on the planet, and then wrestling at the University of Missouri, there's no doubt in my mind I wouldn't be here if I hadn't have done that. So um, there's a pathway for elite, um, amateur collegiate wrestlers to come into the sport of mixed martial arts. There is now so many management groups who realize the potential of, of amateur wrestlers, college wrestlers. And uh, we can come in here and we can keep on stacking up wins because that's what we do. I think it's the best, re it's the best base to have. Call it a martial art, call it combat sports, call it what you want, but it's the best base that you will ever have. So parents, get your kid in re kids in wrestling and we're gonna have a lot more UFC champions. Yeah, Michael, real quick, you mentioned Allegiant earlier. Is that something you've talked to the UFC about or is that just something that's a pipe dream for you that you wanna have? Um, I, uh, there's been, not talks, but there's been mentions of it. I think when you talk about, you're never doing a stadium if it isn't Conor McGregor right now, as, as the landscape looks, right? And then you look at a guy who can come in and build the intrigue, put butts in seats, make people feel something. Name a guy who's got more momentum in the entire UFC than, than me. And now we're doing the Ultimate Fighter, 12 episodes over the entire summer to build the intrigue, to build, to build the animosity, to build this rivalry. Um, and it's genuine. I, you guys know me. I'm a pretty nice, even keel guy. I don't really like Conor McGregor that much, it turns out. So um, got a ton of respect for him. But he and I, I don't think see eye to eye in a lot of ways. And that's a lot of competitive chirp. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I passed Allegiant Stadium today, and I told my wife, I said, hey, we're, we should fight there. There's no reason we should be fighting in T-Mobile Arena.